All right. So hello to anyone joining us. We'll um, wait a few minutes to make sure that everyone who wants to join gets to join. So we'll properly start this um, webinar in about four minutes. Until then, Matthew, would you like to chat? Maybe tell me what you've been working on. Sure, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, hi for the early birds who have made it to the session uh, on time. Really appreciate you uh, being here. Uh, so my name is Matthew. Uh, we work with uh, software and technology businesses to help them sell more to the right people. Uh, I'm really uh, LinkedIn is actually one of my. Uh, well, actually, I think it's probably the most effective way that I go to market with my clients, and I teach. I get all of my clients to use LinkedIn as well because you know what. There's almost a billion people here on this platform, so uh, why wouldn't we try to find our target customers uh, through that way? And certainly when selling in a B2B environment. Um, so uh, yeah, what we've been working on, uh, we've actually changed direction in the organization the last uh, 12 months. We've gone for more of a performance marketing uh, uh, style where, uh, because I really wanted to think about what our clients really want. Uh, I've took a bit of a customer centric or a client centric focus. and. Most of our clients, or most most anybody really, all they want really want is to be able to understand how their marketing and energy is being spent to attract a customer. A lot of people in the software and technology space are specifically they're they're, they're ones and zeros types of people. They know that if they build a certain bit of code, it's going to and run, and it's without fault, it's going to run well. Uh, whereas marketing sort of falls into the situation where it's a little bit little bit spongy, a little bit hard to really define. There's an old saying in marketing where they say that 50% of your marketing dollars actually works. You just don't know which 50%. And so I've turned my business to focus really much, uh, really, really, really clearly on that performance marketing piece, knowing that a dollar goes in, two or three dollars comes back out. So that's what I've been really constantly working on to refine and define over the course of the last, the last 12 months. We've been doing this agency for about four years. And prior to that, I'll introduce myself properly when we really go live, but um, I've been in software that, and technology for about 20 years now. That sounds good, Matthew. Thank you so much for having you here. Well, we are spending another two minutes. Uh, we'll start exactly at 10.05 so that more people can hear what you have got about to say and all the wisdom that you will be sharing. But I just want to point out one thing uh, that you also just share is that not only there is a billion user on this particular platform LinkedIn, that is no other social platform where they tell you exactly what your prospect and what your clients do for a meaning for work. I mean, if you go to Meta, if you go to X.com, or if you go to Facebook or LinkedIn, uh, uh, Instagram, or even if you go to TikTok, now not only, yes, I do agree that you can still get traffic, get eyeball on those platforms. Um, you just don't know who exactly those people uh, in terms of the eyeball that you are getting. But where is something in? How bloody amazing that is that they tell you exactly what your prospect and what your client is. So you can be super, super, super targeted. But equally, with the content that they are sharing, you know what is inside their mind that is excited with about that. Uh, they, they are excited in their professional life. What a channel. Don't you agree? <laughs> yeah, look, it's 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 the it's the place that I get most of my lead. Well, all of my well, I won't say all, but uh, most of my sales from. It's it's a great uh, path to, uh, to to go to market. And you know what? It's really you know it's it's outrageously cheap as well. You know, so we've got clients who exactly. do spend. I got clients spending six, ten, twelve thousand dollars a month on actual advertising through the other platforms, uh, and really, you know, if somebody's trying to engage with their clients, engage with their target customer. You know, they can do it for uh, you know even if they use Sales Navigator, which is about a hundred and something dollars a month. That's really that's a that's the lowest cost, highest impact activity that that you could do. Absolutely. Well, it's ten oh five now. Without further ado, we are going to uh, get start uh, sharing the session very very soon. But before that, I'm going to go into the background and let me take over to tell you guys a little bit more about the Engage AI and what we can do and how you can. Uh, leverage uh, Engage AI for your business, especially on LinkedIn, and then we will get right into uh, hearing all the wisdom Matt has got to say. Well, thank you so much for everyone who is starting in, and I look forward to be speaking with you guys, and also uh, giving a few uh, prize for, for everyone who is attending. Uh, if you want to win the prize, make sure you comment and get additional entry. 
I'll speak soon. I'm going to go into the back Chat, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Jason. All right. So I just want to say a warm welcome to everyone who's joining us to our series on webinars on the sales and prospecting in B2B business, proudly brought to you by Engage AI. Throughout this webinar series, our expert guest speakers like Matthew will share insider tips and strategies that they have successfully employed to propel the growth of their own businesses. By bringing experts in the B2B space to you, Engage AI hopes you'll gain valuable insights on expanding the visibility of your B2B business, acquire actionable prospecting strategies that yield tangible tangible results, and discover proven methods to boost sales performance and drive revenue growth. And for those who stay until the end of the webinar, we will be giving away 10 free pro subscriptions, each valued at $720. So every comment or question you leave in the chat earns you bonus entries. So I hope that we'll be able to talk more there. Plus, if you would like access to our AA prompt library, all you have to do is take a screenshot while you're um, in this event, and then you can write any kind of text you want saying what you love about the event or anything like that, and then post it to LinkedIn or to Twitter slash X, and then tag us. So on the screen, you'll see our social media for LinkedIn as well as Twitter. And when we get notified, we will send you the prompt library. So before we dive in further, let me introduce you to a game changer in the digital landscape, Engage AI. In an era where traditional communication method often falls flat, Engage AI empowers you to break through the digital noise. People don't always respond to messages or read emails or answer calls, but they do respond to meaningful comments on their content, especially on platforms like LinkedIn. So try out an extension for free. I'll share a link to download it in the comments now. All right. So Engage AI simplifies outreach with a three-step strategy to kickstart meaningful relationships and get responses from your prospects. We start with breaking the ice with insightful comments on LinkedIn posts and then we get their attention through a consistent and meaningful engagement. And then lastly, we ensure that your LinkedIn profile acts as a compelling lead magnet for when they visit you. If you'd like more details on this strategy, you can check out the article linked in the chat, which I'll send in a moment, or you can scan the QR code on the screen. And again, don't forget to leave your comments and questions in the chat for those bonus entries, and so we can have a quick um, Q&A at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, let's dive into the second edition of our webinar series, Code to Connection, Building Influence and Driving Sales Through Social Selling on LinkedIn. Okay, Matthew, over to you. Thanks very much. I really appreciate the intro. Um, so hi, everybody. As uh, I said earlier, my name is Matthew. And I'm Chief Strategist here at Tech Talk, and we work with software and technology businesses and help them sell more to the right people. Now, if you're not in software and technology, that is absolutely okay. The tips and ideas and, and strategies I'm going to be sharing with you today are, are going to work for you. So uh, that's my niche is software and technology, but uh, you don't need to worry about that. Just go through, take some screenshots and, and, uh, and ask questions throughout the process. More than happy to answer them. We've got a bit of a tight schedule today, so I'm going to be uh, going very quickly, and I speak very quickly. And the only advice I can give anybody in relation to me speaking quickly is to try to listen faster. Uh, I don't know how possible that is, but uh, let's see how we go. So today it's all about code to connection. So we want to actually create a connection with our customers. Now, uh, specifically, we're going to look at uh, LinkedIn, obviously. And with that, we're going to make sure that we really understand who they are. Because when you talk about sales and talk about business, uh, often we, we describe ourselves as B2B businesses, business to business, uh, like me, or uh, you know, B to C, business to a consumer or customer. But if we think about this when it comes to LinkedIn, I want you to think H to H, human to human. So just communicating and building a relationship 
is is really a great key here and which takes me to my my first slide and I'll, I'll just dive into it now um okay so quick linkedin facts almost a billion people on linkedin 200 countries worldwide lots of people around there now the first thing i want you to think about here is the complete and active linkedin pages are five times more impressions and interactions so do a bit of house cleaning, a bit of house, a bit of, bit of tidy up around the place. Look at your profile and I'll take you through what a good profile looks like, what a, a pretty ordinary one looks like, and we'll, we'll build on your knowledge from there. For there's 40,000 skills, so I bet your skills there. Uh, it's three new members every second and 63 million companies. You know what? Your customers are here. Now, speaking of the B2B or B2C or H2H um, and, uh, and really understanding who your customers are, once you think about, here's a quick question. What do you think is the most followed uh, profile or what's the most interacted with profile on LinkedIn? And you'd be wrong if you said a company because remember, LinkedIn is about H to H, human to human. So the most popular people are Bill Gates at 34 million followers and Richard Branson at 16 million followers. Because you know what? Microsoft and Virgin, whilst interesting, they don't have, there's no personal connection there. So the first thing, the first tip I would like to give you is post on your personal account and then share it to your business account. So that's really important. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much about if your business account doesn't get very many followers. Obviously, you, you get a couple hundred credits or you get a hundred credits every month uh, to invite people to follow it. Still do that if you like. Uh, I've got about twelve and a half thousand followers on, on LinkedIn and on Tech Talk. I think it's like four or five hundred people. So really, the people that care about you and not necessarily your business. Let's, uh, let's carry on. So hopefully that's, uh, that's the first little tip there for you. Let's define social selling. I love to start, a, start every webinar with some sort of definition. And I like, I like this definition. So social selling is like making friends online who happen to need what you're selling. It's about using social media to chat, help and connect with people, turning those virtual coffee dates into real business deals. And as I said earlier in the intro, I've made almost every single sale in the last couple of years, quite a few million dollars worth of business, just simply through LinkedIn. And then my customers over the course of time have done the same. And I think the number's up around about $100 million worth of business over the years, uh, just through using that personal connection. But being a billion people on the platform, how do you stand out in a crowded market? And how you stand out in a crowded market is simply by doing these four key things. So the four key things is, first of all, what are you going to do? How do you actually get here? I know that people, you know, everybody's here on probably on LinkedIn. We're streaming on LinkedIn. It's a pretty good chance you're on LinkedIn. But let me have a think about your profile. Let's take you through one step at a time. So number one, spruce up your profile. This includes a professional photo, compelling headline, and detailed summary and highlights expert, that highlights your expertise and accomplishments. Number two, know your target audience. And that's so important. Just spraying and praying and putting it out there to almost to, to everybody in the world is, is not going to work. Uh, you know, unless, yeah, well, actually, there's, there's no circumstance in which not knowing your target audience is going to uh, not benefit you. You need to know who your target customer is. And I'm going to talk about that in this upcoming slides. Number three, provide valuable content. So you got to share insightful content, addresses common challenges and trends from the trenches. You know, so people want to know that you're one of them uh, rather than just trying to, trying to make money off them or sell to them. So you, they, people want to know that you're one of them. And, of course, engage authentically. You know, not just a good job or, you know, well done. It's actually why is it a good job? Why was it well done? How, do you, how can you add value to the conversation because it's a conversation in those comment sections. It's a conversation, not just a, an opportunity for you to blast your sales message. Because I actually got a sales message today or a message on LinkedIn uh, via direct message. First interaction, person requested my connection. I accepted it. And the first thing they said is, if you want to make millions in crypto, join my webinar. I thought, this is crazy. And so I went back with a little bit of help. I said to the person uh, that this is, is a heavy sales message. Uh, had a look at your profile, you probably need to do some work around that to really genuinely engage uh, as a human rather than just seeing me as a number. And, and of course, everybody feels that way when they get those long emails or long messages from people, often from, from engineering uh, houses that have you know 50 different skill sets. Don't send that list to people. That is 
I can't imagine anybody buying off that going, you know what, I really want a PHP programmer for $12.50. It's not, it's not great. You're going to get blocked. Please make sure that you're actually engaging authentically. Or LinkedIn will block you, or, or link, you know you'll get blocked, and your 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 score will go down. It's actually going to be less valuable uh, in the long term if you don't engage authentically. So your profile, the importance of a professionally curated LinkedIn profile, credibility and opportunity, and branding it allows you to do quite a lot. And I'm not going to read all this stuff to you, but you know you can read. You get the idea. Your tagline, descriptive and succinct. Your tagline should capture the essence of your professional identity in a few words. Include some keywords. Think about SEO. Think about how you want to be found. Somebody types in what you do or who your what your name is. You're going to be found on Google for those. Your 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 title will come up at the top of Google. So you want to make sure you're really thinking about your title and general manager. Whilst it is your official title, nobody cares what title you've given yourself. What they care about is how you help them. If you can get really clear about the value you present to the world, then your target customer will engage with you more effectively. So include keywords. Think about the terms people might use when searching for a professional with your skills. Use these terms in your tagline to increase your visibility. A great pro, a great structure that you could use right now is I help X to do Y through Z. Okay, I help software and technology companies to grow through performance marketing. That's one way of thinking about it. So I help X to do Y through Z. So think about your business right now. I'm giving you homework. This doesn't. This wasn't just a TED talk. You're going to actually have to do something here today. Um, think about what you do, who you help, how you do it. All right, let's carry on. Here's a couple of examples I've used myself uh, and one of my clients, actually. So helping software and technology companies scale through strategy, sales, and marketing. Michael over here, he wanted to put founder in there, but then we put in, we help engineering and environmental consultancies transform their mobile data collection and reporting processes. The other key areas here is the, is the, the, the top image. You can put branding in there. You can do almost anything. This actually is your time. This is your front of your shop, your virtual shop. So you might want to make it inviting, interesting, and welcoming. So have a look at that. Your profile and background image matter. And so your pro your photo should be a high quality headshot with good lighting, and you look approachable and professional. Now, um, because I uh, a bit of a sense of humor, I found a few that uh, don't really Cut the mustard. You know, if, you, if you've had a few beers on the beach, maybe it's not the right LinkedIn profile to go with. Or, of course, a bathroom selfie. Might want to think about that. A blurry nightclub photo probably doesn't really say that, you know, you're a, you're a professional. Uh, somebody looking like out of American Psycho, probably not great. Andy's having a great time there. And, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the photo that's probably more appropriate for Instagram. So these are examples of bad ones. Don't take a screenshot of that and say, Matthew told me I need to do a bathroom selfie. That's not the case. Um, and you know what? With a, with, an, with a good phone these days and with a, uh, a, 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 with a little bit of lighting, you can give yourself a reasonable uh, headshot. And you know what? I think there's even AI tools out there, seeing as we're talking about AI today, there's even AI tools out there that can help uh, put together a reasonable photo for yourself. So don't make these mistakes. This is not your. These are not. This is not your time to just. I guess be more creative. This is your time to be professional, because people, when they're engaging with you, they're going to look you up. All right, let's carry on. Recommendations. Think about how who you've recommended, how you've recommended. If you've not provided many recommendations, you probably won't get very many back. There's a law of reciprocity. So if you give something, people will feel more inclined to give you something back. So quantity over quality. Sorry, quality over quantity. Can't read my own writing there. Um, but you, there, there need to be heartfelt and detailed recommendations, not many generic ones. You know, a good person is not is 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 slightly better than nothing. Um, but we want to make sure that you are actually recommend. So really making an impact here. So a recommendation that tells a story and gives specific examples of your contribution is always more impactful. You know, Matthew's nice, not great. Matthew helped me understand my business, uh, generate leads, and sell my company to an investor. Uh, that's a great recommendation. So reciprocity. Don't hesitate to write recommendations for colleagues. This not only strengthens your relationship, but also encourages them to return the favor. Write recommendations for people that you know, like, and trust. They'll do the same, most likely. 
And if you, they don't, well, then that's uh, you, you've done the right thing. You've put the positive stuff out in the world and you'll get it back. So action step, as I said, there's going to be homework today. Write one and ask for one. Simple as that. So just write somebody a, 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 a recommendation. That's easy. It takes five minutes. You could even use some type of AI bot to help you uh, write that recommendation if you're not sure, you know, put in the structure and, and if you're not, um, you're not entirely comfortable doing that. But just do that. You'll find an amazing response. Endorsements. Remember the thing, oh, yeah, this person's good at sales or this, good, this person's good at uh, software development. Remember, LinkedIn allows you to rearrange your skills. So you can actually go into your profile, edit the profile, and look at all the things you've been endorsed for. Now, if you've been endorsed for team building, but team building is not really something you want to get out there into the world, you can actually grab the little burger menu, like the three lines, and drag that down and bring up maybe you're a programmer or maybe you're a, a, a salesperson or maybe you're, you know, you're, or a, you're a personal assistant or a general manager. You can bring those skills up to the top and drop down the ones you don't necessarily want to be found for. They'll still be there. They'll just um, uh, they'll reorder. So I found, uh, because I've been on LinkedIn for a long time, they max out at 99 plus. And if you have a look at the uh, endorsements that I've got, the, and they only show five. Uh, all of mine are maxed out. So do that. So, so once again, uh, LinkedIn allows you to rearrange your skills. Ensure your most relevant, important skills are uh, at the top. That's what I just said. I'm already getting ahead of my slides here. So engage with your network by endorsing their skills. Once again, give give out to get back. This is often prompts people to 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 uh, provide that reciprocity. Once again, action step: rearrange your skills. Endorse somebody's made an impact. And I won't let me show you how because I actually cut that slide out because I know that we're a little bit short on time. So now we've sort of done the housekeeping here with when it comes to your profile. Let's really think about what your customers and, and what are the four keys. So when I train my clients and I work in consulting, I think about the four critical impact areas that make a genuine, a genuine impact when it comes to making a building a relationship and essentially making a sale. So number one is your target market. Knowing your target market, and it's not just name, rank, and serial number that you can find on LinkedIn, great place to start, but that's not the only thing. You need to really identify your best fit clients that aligns with your business goals because not every client, not, not everybody's created equal. Not every client's equal. You want to look for a specific type of organization. Feel free to say to the people who aren't right, we're not right for each other. That level of confidence in your business will drive a greater level of profit and, and also reduce the level of pain in customer service and, and, uh, and, and support in the back end. Finding A-class clients is always a better way to operate. Second thing here is your circle of influence. This is where LinkedIn comes in again. So your circle of influence is then your obscurity is the enemy. The simple fact of the matter is thinking about your business, and I don't know what your business is. The simple fact of the matter is if more people knew about you and what you did, you would make more sales. Sounds like a really obvious thing to say, but then there's so many businesses out there who, who go, well, I just need to complete the next feature and everybody will be a path to my door. Or I just need to do this. You think about what Engage AI are doing today. They're putting, they're asking people like me to help them promote their brand. Once again, growing their circle of influence, specifically talking about LinkedIn and growing their audience. So that's exactly what these guys are doing. Well, how can you in the next, say, 30 days, get known by more people in your target market. It's a little challenge for you. The fourth thing is your relationship. Now, getting known is step one, but actually then having a relationship is, is, is even more important because now they know you, they want to know if they like you. So building a strong relationship by guiding your prospects with content that highlights the benefits. So you've got, you can do social selling, which is what we're going to be, which we are talking about today. Your social selling needs to be based around actual real life communication. Build that relationship. Demonstrate that you're like them. Now, the fourth part, and lots of people forget about this, is they've got, they know their target market. They're known by a bunch of people. They've got a great relationship, but they actually forget to ask people to buy. They forget to ask people. You know, so you need to think about crafting a personalized offer. I was working with a salesperson just last, uh, last month, and I said, oh, this person's decided to go ahead. But they are, uh, you know, they go waiting for the end of next month or they're waiting. I said, well, look, what sort of offer could we create for them that actually has them come on board now? And we, we come up with an offer and it was pretty simple. They literally, they genuinely had a gap 
in service. They had service people not sitting around, but they had service people underutilized. So I said, well, what if we made an offer where we gave them a small discount or more service? We actually provided more service for this one. And I said, well, if you come on board now, we can provide you X, Y, and Z extra. The client came on board, the salesperson hit their number, and the business has now got a new happy customer. And all we need is to communicate with that client and bring them on board. Now, this was a reasonably high price deal, about $50,000 worth. Um, but you need to make sure you're constantly making offers that are valid and, and useful to your market. All right. So thinking about your target market, going back to LinkedIn, this is one of the challenges that LinkedIn has that you need to overcome by being doing social selling is you know, not all customer profiles tell the full story. So these two people are probably the same as far as you, as far as most data is concerned. They're male, born in 1948, raised in the UK, they've been married twice, live in a big house and they're wealthy and famous. So as far as most of the people, most of the world's concerned, when it comes to data, these two people are exactly the same. Unfortunately, well, or fortunately, they're not necessarily the same people. Um, and I don't know the uh, the demographic of who I'm talking to here. Hopefully, you know who King Charles is. And um, not everybody's going to know who Ozzy Osbourne is. But from just looking at him, you can probably guess uh, what sort of person he is. Uh, what to, He was in a band. Um, but, yeah, these are diff very different people. One's going to be probably buying, you know, more uh, calfskin riding boots than the other. <laughs> All right, then. So think about your target customer. Understand, get in their head. So how do we do that? We do that by thinking about your top five to 10 client organizations that you really want to sell to. What makes them ideal? What makes them easy to satisfy and work with? How are they profitable to serve? Do they pay on time? Are they? Do they refer you? These, Of course, these are great outcomes, but how do we identify what makes them perfect for you? And so I, so I like to think about this. Ideal clients are always best fit for your service products and company, and the reverse is true. So if they're not ideal, they're going to take up more time. Let's say you are a great salesperson or you've got a great offering, a great website, great marketing, they buy. But then they just don't get it and they just drag the chain when it comes through your customer service and they, they all they churn out of your organization. You've spent money time acquiring them and they're actually low value. And, of course, so... Once again, some action steps for you. List those top 10 clients. What features do they have in common? Why do they choose you? What triggered the need? Now, I'm going to give you a template. So take a screenshot of this if you like. Here's something I use for my clients to really get clear about your target customer. Because this is, okay, well, I'm not teaching you how to use LinkedIn today. That's not the use of the, that's not the reason for this uh, session to exist. This is about social selling. That means understanding your customer really well. Write down your customers. What do they have in common? Vertical size, location, complexity, ownership structure, that sort of stuff. That is findable on LinkedIn. And, of course, we want that. That's a must. But then why do they choose you? And if you don't necessarily know why they chose you, you might have a vague idea, oh, well, we're good service, we're referred, whatever. Call your clients. The more times and more, more interaction you have with your clients, the better off you're going to be, the more successful you're going to be. Because, and also, every time I've done this with a new client, every time, more businesses come out of it because the client goes, oh, yeah, well, what if you could do this or have you thought about that or maybe I can get you guys to help me with this thing. So that's that. Now, when it comes to selling and when it comes to marketing, the event that triggered the need is really interesting. So event that triggered the need, once again, we can track some of these things on LinkedIn. Change of role, change of legislation, change of all of these different things. So, so a new person comes into the business, the business gets acquired, whatever it might be, was there an event that had the person, because the, if they're dealing with a problem that you solve, there's got to be a point where the, where, the, where the problem is bigger than the resistance to not doing anything about the problem. And so if somebody's new comes into a role, you can see that on LinkedIn and then communicate with them. So event that trigger the need is important. Who have you beaten as a competitor? If you don't know who your competitors are, you're in, you're in trouble because your competitors know who you are. And if they don't know who you are, then your customers aren't going to know who you are. So, And then also think about, genuinely think about your top 10 customers and think about those vulnerabilities. Why? Uh, you know, where are you in threat? Okay. Know your buyer and their problems. Uh, this guy's obviously got some sort of caffeine problem. Um, but uh, know your buyer. So what makes your, decision, your buyers and decision makers tick? And so with that, 
a really a great tip that I, I came up with a little while ago, and I've been trying to teach as many people as this is possible. Have you ever thought about their jobs and the criteria in which they're judged, the, your target customer? Now, if you think about your target customer, just by the way, uh, we're sort of going off script here, but I wanted to share this with you because it's important. If you think you sell to CEOs um, and, and you go, well, I, I sell to CEOs of organizations, so the CEO might raise the purchase order or sign the check or approve the purchase. But the CEO is typically too busy in the organization to actually engage with salespeople. So you need to think about who in the organization is actually in pain, engage with them, and provide them the tools, knowledge, and experience to be able to go up to the next level. Going directly to the CEO, you're going to be rebuffed and it's going to be really difficult to actually engage at that level. So think about this. So you might work, you might know the project managers are in pain and then, of course, they make a purchase because the CEO says, yep, fix that pain. So I want you to think about that. What's the relay race? Because the person who starts the relay race hands the baton over to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. You need to think about what's the process somebody goes through when making a purchase decision really deeply. Okay. Think about your buyer persona. Think about your target customer. Write down their role. Write down their job description. Then if you're in Australia, go to Seek. If you're overseas, maybe Monster or Indeed or one of the other job sites, look up that role. You'll see a bunch of jobs listed for that role. And then they're also going to tell you their education, how they're measured, what their, you know, like the KPIs, um, what their duties are. You actually can build a really, really strong profile of your target customer based off adverts on, on, um, on job sites. Because the company is going to tell you exactly how you how to measure these people. And if you can solve that problem with your solution, your software, your service, you're actually going to be way ahead of the game. If you say, oh, we, we do this, do X, Y, Z, you're going to find yourself really way more in a way more powerful position because you know specifically who they are and what they do. So you seek or use Indeed or Monster or what are the one of the job sites, and uh, and you'll be you'll be way ahead of the game in understanding your target customer. How does this relate to social selling? Understanding the person. Okay, buyers of technology are people like you and me, or buyers of any, so this is my slide, so I sell to technology people, um, but for you, it doesn't matter what you sell. Your buyers are people, they have roles, responsibilities, hopes and fears. So here's your action steps. I'll give you the template, which is on the next page. You can take a screenshot of it. Oh, let me just do that right now. So, for example, we, we know that buyer persona number one is CIO, Chief Information Officer. So what three questions keep them awake at night? And I like to position it as a how do I or how will I? That's the sort of the mysterious thing that keeps me awake at night. So how will I ensure releases? And then you want to go through what's the what's their, so, so step one, go through the three questions. Step two, understand how they're solving it right now. DIY or in-house or Excel or or getting somebody outsourced to do the thing, whatever it might be. What's the drawbacks of that? You know, scalability, speed, accuracy. Those are the drawbacks. And then how do you solve for that drawback? How do you solve that problem without that drawback? You know, automation, control, process, whatever it might be. Fill this out. Be as verbose as you like. Be you really, you know, write as much as you can in this in this document because that is the gold nuggets that will form your marketing communication, your sales scripting communication, your words on your website, your emails, because you understand deeply the problems and what their alternatives are and your solution. Now, I've brought this slide in here just to show you, uh, have you understand about sales. I know this is more about LinkedIn, but I want to really share something with you because I've seen this problem like that chap that I mentioned earlier. First communication, first message, he reached out to me. He said, hey, Matt, do you want to get rich using crypto? Join my webinar. I'm like, ah, that's, <laughs> that's too much already. What he was doing is he was expecting me, expecting that I'm down here at seeking solutions or even considering my options. Hmm, I want to find a solution to getting rich using crypto. Um, but maybe that's not even something I'm not even aware that I need to be. Uh, do I care about crypto? Uh, do I? So I want you to think about where that person is in the buyer journey because, and then deploy the correct tool for the job. So if a person's unaware or a high level, you know, first level connection with you, which is great, and but they don't really know who you are, don't start offering them case studies or comparisons or ROI calculators because that type of stuff requires effort and time to read and go through. 
And that, and so if you are if you demonstrate that your hard work, your effort to engage with, they're not going to engage with you. The first introduction needs to be light and breezy, listicles, blog articles, videos, infographics, stuff that can be consumed very quickly and easily. And as the person starts engaging with you down the process, as they become aware of the problem, they start thinking about the solutions and what options do I have, then you can deploy further and greater and greater levels of detail because you want to engage the person in the process. So I grabbed this screenshot from Demand Gen, uh, Demand, Demand Gen Squared. Um, what are their top recommendations when social selling? Curd the sales messages, support content with data and research, add insight from industry thought leaders, and you, you're allowed to be a thought leader as well. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that in the next slide. Make content easier to access. Uh, you don't have to gatekeep all your content. For me, I give away all my best ideas. Uh, you go, if you, you look at my blogs and my videos and my webinars that I do, I literally give everything away and our company gets paid to, uh, to, to actually do. We get paid to do the thing. We don't get paid to think about the thing because you know what? There's enough products out there in the world that can tell you in general terms what to do. But actually doing it is where you get paid. And, of course, don't overload people with too much copy, too much info. Like this slide. This is probably the worst slide I've got. Too much info on this one slide. All right. But you get the idea. I wanted to show it to you because I want you to think about, well, how am I, how am I engaging these people? Am I asking them to join my cryptocurrency webinar when I've just met them? That's too much. So that's something to think about there. Engaging content ideas. I've used LinkedIn as the example here today. Uh, if you go to creator mode, click on creator mode on LinkedIn, uh, you can start a newsletter. You can call it anything you like. I call mine technology marketing and sales, dedicated to helping software and technology companies sell more to the right people. I got 2,000 subscribers and I haven't paid zero, I paid zero dollars for that. So why would you not try to get your ideas out there in the form of a newsletter? And I encourage literally every single one of my clients that if I've got a blog or they've got ideas, I've got thoughts that come up, engage with the copywriter, put pen to paper, put hands on keyboard and write. People will subscribe to it. And the great thing is LinkedIn will create that as a newsletter. People who subscribe to it, whenever I publish anything, it goes directly to their inbox. They can mark your email, you know, you're at yourcompany.com email or it's a spam. I don't want to see your stuff, but they won't mark LinkedIn stuff as spam because they, they want that. They need that. So that's going to still get through. Another thing is I did a webinar last month uh, in March or a couple of weeks ago called the ROI Revolution, Building Your Tech Sales Engine, very specific for tech people. Um, I do these webinars every single month. And so the idea there is to continually put useful and valuable content out there and then you will expect uh, the return. And if we're growing our business at exactly the speed I want to. So we only, we only allow two new clients a month to come on board because we have a capacity. If we do bring on more, the machine's going to break. My, my eight staff are not going to be able to deliver it. So I want to make sure the quality is still very, very high. So I understand your capacity to, to deliver and do activities that will provide you with that A-class number one customer. I know we're running over time. I've got a couple more slides. Please stick with me. If this is a value, let me know. Um, I want to make sure that I'm giving as much value as possible here. Carousels, um, this, I made these in Canva. Carousels are the most engaging format when putting content up. What's the best tech? And then uh, but I won't go into how to do a carousel or what carousel, but go ahead and Google carousels, please. Uh, they're really useful. People engage with them way time, way, way, way higher uh, for putting content out there onto, onto LinkedIn. The last thing is commenting. Now, we know that Engage AI does that, but I want you to think about um, the quality of your commenting, and that's what the, the product does. But even if you don't use their product, I want you to think about what you're actually doing. Providing insightful comments. Make sure it's actually somebody, if you were to read your own comment based off this thing, is this useful or just a... Just a good old great post. Well done. That's not useful. That's not interesting. Make it interesting. Add value. Add your spin on it. I see what you did there. Now do this. Or I see what you did there. Have you thought about that? Or in my experience, we saw X, Y, and Z. Really useful stuff. A good approach is to find your own voice. Find, you know, communicate. Become recognized for the quality of your thoughts, obviously. Um, read further comments. Obviously, stay with that. As soon as you comment, you should have your uh, should have LinkedIn switched on so you can 
create a uh, that you'll get messages saying hey uh, a new post or somebody's liked the thing you can actually go back and continue to engage in that conversation now i wanted to give you an example of somebody who's actually turned communicating on linkedin into a job and i had a friend of mine named uh, gunner uh, he uh, was is, is a master at this he's actually written a book about social selling um, if you message me i can i'll send you a link to it uh, i'll introduce you to him uh, but he does he does a lot of social selling a real expert but I used I grabbed one of his comments here so he put something up so a person um, he, he made a comment but the response to that I couldn't set it better as I work on my own brand consistency because my true North Star so Gunner has had various communications this person continues to have conversations go through the whole process now so what? Why would you do this? Well, Gunner uh, was able to turn social selling, and this is why it's probably the key message that I want you to think about this from today's conversation. Gunner communicated with people from Hootsuite, communicated with, you know, which is a giant global brand. He's living in Australia, giant global brand. He communicated, engaged social selling, did commenting, did what he needs to do, and now he works for Hootsuite at an executive level role. So really think clear, deeply about your value you're providing in those comments, in that engagement, in that social selling piece. Be visible and get out there. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I've gone way over time. Thank you so much for joining. I've got the time for some questions, if you like. Um, I think that there's a way for uh, Ning to, um, to, to show us how that works. Um, if there's no questions, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I might have just uh, gone ahead and spoke at a thousand miles an hour. Everybody's sort of reeling from that. Need a cup of tea and a lie down. Uh, here we go. We got one as a business owner with limited time and resources. How can I prioritize and streamline my social selling efforts on LinkedIn to maximize the impact um, without spreading myself too thin? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jason. Um, great question. Very important. There's, how do I say this nicely? If you find any time in the day to watch Netflix or, 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 or be on other social media platforms, uh, you've got time to at least go into LinkedIn, read through that and follow a certain number of people. Who do you want to do business with? Follow them. And using Sales Navigator, you can be notified when they are. And, you know, if it's just a like or a you know, bit, add value. I think that's the most important thing. I would streamline it. But also there are tools out there. Um, there are tools out there that can actually do those things for you. Because, yes, you can get really bogged down in in the, I guess, the the... the I guess the roundabout of what you're actually doing. Um, so Jason had the same question. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, use the tools that are available. Actually, engage AI, obviously. Uh, that's who's sponsoring today's event. Uh, but you know, just go on there, target those customers, make sure you're communicating effectively. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, what are some effective ways to nurture relationships and prospects and LinkedIn without coming across overly sales oriented? Yep. Um, don't ask for the sale. Just build the relationship. Add the value in that there are that you that you have in yourself. Now, a great way to think about the the, the value that you add is go to your sent items in your email box. What questions have your customers asked, and what answers have you provided? Your your sent items. You've probably got I don't know if you're anything like me. Probably a hundred emails that you've sent this week. Probably more. Um, but you've probably answered a bunch of questions. You've probably sent a bunch of information. Go to your outbox, find that stuff, and put it on LinkedIn. Another great way to engage with people is to do polls. Uh, they were very, very popular about eight, six, eight months ago. I uh, haven't seen that many at the moment, but polls are still a very good way as well. Um, so nurture relationships. Think about what you actually care about what your customers are going through. Why do they put it up? What will they? And then add your value. Um, yeah, humor is is if you can if you can be funny on demand, Jason. Absolutely, that's what I found as well. Um, what are effective? Sorry, are there specific engagement strategies that tend to yield better results on LinkedIn? Um, so, I go with uh, so my first three or four messages on LinkedIn uh, when I am outreaching to my target customers. If anybody here is not in software and technology, you might not have been outreached by me. Uh, but if you are in my target market and I've outreached to you, I have a, I have a process that I go through. Um, very rare. I don't do much selling at all. Uh, the messages, and I write those messages um, 
I've got a, a page of scripts and I use a, um, I actually don't necessarily write every single one individually, but those messages are not sales-based messages, they're help-based messages. How do we help customers? Or now that I know my target customer, uh, I'm making sure that I'm actually delivering value. Um, so add help, don't sell, don't sell. You know what, um, if people are ready to buy, then they're ready to buy, don't do selling. And, to, and so when I make an offer, so we, the fourth key is making an offer, of course, but then I make that offer usually on email or I make that offer uh, when it's appropriate. Okay, how do I handle objections or skepticism from prospects when utilizing social selling tactics on LinkedIn? Um, usually because I'm not trying to sell. So social selling is probably a misnomer. If you go back to my first slide, it's about finding friends. You don't want to sit down with your friend at a cafe who might be a prospect and saying, oh, have I got a deal for you? That's not that's not what I'm going for here. Social selling is about building that relationship. And if, if you're clearly articulating through your content what you do, people will come to you. Simple as that. Um, if there's no more questions, uh, as I said, I'm happy to answer them. Hang around for another five minutes if you like. But if there's no more questions, I do have an offer um, in my uh, – so if you are in software and technology, I've got a, a, a process. The value that I give, um, the value that I give to people is I try to provide some consulting without really – adding a sales option or a sales offer once again. So what I do is I look at the four key areas. Remember those four key areas of, you know, knowing your target customer, uh, building your relationships, uh, building your, uh, building your um, sorry, target customer, building a circle of influence, building the relationship and making an offer. I've broken that down into what we call a scorecard. Even if you're not in software and technology, you can still do that. You'll find ways of, uh, we'll, we'll provide you back with a, a, like an analysis of your answers. And the, uh, the AI in that will then write up, this is what you should do to fill those gaps. So that might be useful to you. Uh, and also, once again, it's free. It provides you insight into your organization and, and, and how you operate. And that could actually help you uh, grow your business. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all the time I've got. I'm probably getting a wrap up here from the team at Engage. Um, all than happy to help if you, if you want to message me outside of this or find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you probably could find me on LinkedIn pretty easily. Over back over to you, Ning. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you so much for sharing your insights today, Matthew. And thank yeah. you to everyone who joined. So as for our giveaway, keep a close eye on your emails or your LinkedIn messages in the coming days. And if you're among the lucky winners for our two-year Engage AI Pro giveaway, then we'll be reaching out to share the news. And if you didn't win or if you don't want to wait for that email, then we still want to give you something as thanks for your support and your participation. So we're offering a special discount for half off your first month of Engage AI Pro, making it only $15. And don't forget to screenshot this event, share and tag us on LinkedIn or on Twitter, and you'll get a free gift in your inbox. So that will be um, exclusive access to our AI prompt library. And for, uh, we don't want you to miss our next session in this webinar series on B2B business, B2B sales and prospecting. So next time, Vinay will be exploring how to master online influence with a guide on establishing your authority on LinkedIn. And just like today, we'll be hosting another giveaway for 10 two-year pro subscriptions to Engage AI. So join us on May 15th for um, mastering online influence steps to establishing authority on, link on LinkedIn. And that is a wrap for today's webinar. We look forward to seeing everyone again next month. Um, you have any final words, Matthew? No, thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, have a great Friday. All right. See you all then. Bye for now.